online. Hello Facebook, I hope that you can see me and hear me. Please let me know. Uh, I was just saying to our friends over on Instagram, I'm hoping that the internet holds up because I'm going to do an Instagram live with somebody who has the most brilliant, brilliant product, which you are all absolutely going to love. It's something that I have used for years and I'm very, very excited about it because I have wanted to talk about it for a long time because I think it is so incredibly helpful. Um, so I am going to crack on with that in just a moment and I do hope the internet holds out. Um, lots to talk about today. I've got a little bit of a kind of a warm weather feel to today. So I think it's time to cozy up, isn't it? If you are at home the whole time, maybe you're working from home or you're just hunkering down or you're self-isolating or whatever. We need things that make us feel cozy and warm and snug. So I've been looking at different fabrics. I've been looking at wools and cashmeres and recyclable fabrics and all of that. So I have got on today a couple of things from a British brand that I really love, which I've talked about before called Bjorken. Uh, which is a British lady. She's got a, a lovely Dutch name, Bjorken. That's that's why it's called Bjorken. Uh, we do have a Liz Loves. It's called. It's slightly different. It's Liz Loves Twenty. Just to be difficult. Okay, for for their website, Bjorken.com. I know, Lainey, you're on Facebook today. Thank you for manning that. Um, and what I really like about this. So she sent me this. This is a cashmere jumper. From their website it's on sale at the moment so you don't get the Liz Loves discount on sale because everything's um, just on sale it's already discounted you only get it on things that are full price but this is really interesting because it's made from cashmere that has been upcycled and recycled so what they do is they use the offcuts of cashmere the fibers that would other otherwise get thrown away and they combine it with post-consumer cashmere so cashmere that they've collected that's been you know discarded and then they upcycle it and you know they are one of the first fashion brands that I've seen that are really promoting this in new clothing so this is you know brand new never been worn but they're actually taking things out of the chain that would otherwise go into landfill or, or not be used so I just I just love it and all their things they're designed in London and they're made in Europe so this is not a Chinese cashmere I know there's a lot of really cheap Chinese cashmere um, which some of it can have questionable origins, as my friend Livia Firth and I were talking about on our podcast. And it's just nice, I think, to be knowing that you're using something or buying something that's a little bit more ethical, a little bit more sustainable. And I've got on their leggings, they've even got these um, recycled cashmere leggings, so comfortable. I really love them. And of course, they've got pockets. Do love pockets. So, yeah, so I'm all cozied up here, cozy up, up and snug. Um, and there is a reason why I'm talking about this, because today I'm going to be talking all about the dreaded moth. Have you gone into your cupboards recently to get something warm and cosy to wrap yourself in, only to find that somebody or something has been having a bit of a feast, a snack attack on our woolens and cashmeres and nice precious things? The dreaded moth, honestly. I could show you. In fact, I will show you. This is one of my favourite wraps. It's just a really simple, fine uh, woolen wrap that I've had for years. Pulled it out of the cupboard to wear. What do I find? Two flipping great moth holes here. Yes, not happy about that. But don't worry, I have a plan. I have a cunning plan. I have a cunning, ethical, sustainable plan, which I shall share with you in just a moment. This, again, one of my favourite things. Had this for years. It's an old Me and M cashmere dressing gown. I had this as a Christmas present, I don't know, six, seven years ago, maybe when they first started. What has it got now? Guess what? It's got little holes, and you can see where I've been trying to darn them, trying to mend them with little bits of grey wool so they don't uh, they don't look so obvious. And I went to put something in the pocket the other day, got downstairs and couldn't find it. And when I looked at the pocket, look, look what the moths have done to my pocket. I can't put anything in that now without mending it. Yeah, Lucy, exactly. One of your favourite cardigans got moth. Okay, so a couple of things before I move on to how to get rid of the moth. 
This actually reminded me of something that we have in this current issue of the magazine, which you may have seen. It's called On the Mend, and it's how to mend and do darning and things that's not invisible. You make a feature of it. And I actually went to a workshop on this with my mum, because she's really handy with a needle and thread. And this is what I did with my Me and M uh, dressing gown, because the moth had got to it. So I decided that I was going to patch it but just patch it in a very visible way. So that's, you know, that's what it's all about, really. It's about if you have a hole to darn, you can either try and do it invisibly so nobody sees, or you can just say, do you know what? I'm going to make a feature of it. I'm going to use some brightly coloured wool. Uh, anyway, do take a look. This is a great book by Aruna Kunaraj. I hope I've said that correctly. She's got a new book out by Quadrille. Um, we've got a little extract in the magazine, so do take a look if you haven't. It's on pages 104 and 105. shows you exactly how to do it, the, the warp and the weft going the different ways. Anyway, so that was my bit of mending. And I've even, my lovely travel wrap, so as many of you know, travel wrap is one of my favourite British brands. It's Scottish cashmere. We featured it in the magazine. We do have a Liz Loves, if you fancy cosying up with something. Maybe you're just feeling like in need of a big hug. It's just great, isn't it, on a cold day, just to wrap up in something. And actually, look how bright that is. How instantly that pink has just cheered up my skin. It's just that reflected light. So this is one of my travel wraps. We do have 10% off travel wrap, by the way, if you use Liz Loves on their website. I know Lainey will pop a link up. But this is what I did, because the moth even got to my travel wrap. So you can see here where I've patched it, and I've made a little square of darning making that into a feature um, so hopefully there are no more moth holes in this and there will not be in the future because of what I'm about to share with you so pay attention because I'm going to be joined by Julia from Total Wardrobe Care talking about the most brilliant way to permanently get rid of moths in a very safe easy and humane way now, one of the reasons that conventional moth repellents don't work is that moths become resistant. So we can no longer use the old-fashioned naphthalene moth balls because they are highly toxic, especially for babies and young children. So really, you know, I know some people were selling them on eBay and thinking it was really clever to go and get them that way. Seriously, don't do it. They are really toxic. You do not want moth balls um, in your house. So then people are using all sorts of essential oils and sprays and things which only work to a limited extent. I know people who spent a fortune on these and yes they do smell quite nice but unfortunately they don't do the real thing. What gets rid of moth is actually a really interesting totally natural compound and this is something that I have genuinely bought and used for many many years um, and I'm going to ask Julia to join us uh, on um, my Instagram. So I can't yet see you on there, Julia. So you, I think you have to request to join me. Um, let me just check that she's not on here waiting to go live with me. Uh, la 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 la. Let's see. So I'm really excited to talk to you about this her company is called total wardrobe care and she has everything to do with i mean all sorts i mean this is um you know she's got storage bags and really lovely wardrobe care sprays she's given us 10 percent off everything by the way with liz loves um we've got all oh, this looks like some sort of lovely ceramic anti-moth burner we've got the cedar wood balls because cedar wood is one of the smells that moths don't like but this is, I have to say, just the best thing. Okay, I'm going to... Lainey, maybe you can... Um, you're on Facebook. So if you make contact with Julia and ask her if she can request to join on my Instagram live. Uh, oh, yeah, Total Wardrobe Care. Here we go. So... Hopefully that will connect because this is so simple and so effective. And I promise you, if you use this, you won't have any holes in your really expensive things. Hi. Oh. <laughs> so nice to connect with you. 
Uh, I am such a massive fan of what we're about to talk about. And as you know, um, I have been a mail order customer on your website for <laughs> many years now. Yes. Um, sorry, to, sorry to see the holes. That's, that's a disaster. Yeah, it's, well, it's not because they've been anywhere where your things have been, I have to say. Um, so these have, have come out of, uh, of a different storage location, so it is not anything to do with the effectiveness of your products. Um, now, just by way of background here, I first got to know yes. about these little um, natural insecticide moth traps, and we'll explain how they work, but I first got to know about them many years ago because I was talking to a company that were researching and developing natural insecticides to use in farming and I knew a little bit about this having a, a farm in Kenya where we were using bio pest control so we could farm organically and regeneratively and not have to spray using pesticides and they found that this little capsule of interesting powder um, attracts insects like moth correct me if I'm wrong and yes. <laughs> they they pick it up they, they come and they land on this little thing on this little pellet and it then sterilizes the male moths is that right well almost almost <laughs> tell me tell me exactly almost. what it does <laughs> Yes, I, I was contacted by this company because they'd been watching my website and they'd seen that I'd been trying to do everything from a natural uh, perspective. So they knew that I would be telling the story. And it's quite a story to tell. Mm. It's um, made of canuba wax and they found that it's got this slippery property that um, diffuses into the atmosphere. So That's if you can right. mix it with something that attracts the uh, the moth, uh, then they'll they'll smell it and then fly down, land on it. So that was the um, principle, which then, as you say, works in a, a apple orchards and yes. apparently a tea plantation. Of yeah, bird. amazing. So, no, that, that that's right. This carnauba yeah. wax, which they also use in in the skincare industry, um, has electrostatic properties. And mm. something that I, that I don't fully understand, but I mean, they patented it and they did all sorts of things, which was really yeah. interesting. And and this was sort of Very one of exciting. one of the side effects, wasn't it? it was finding how yeah. it could be used to, to control moths at home. Yes, and, and they, so they mixed it with the uh, the natural female moth pheromone. So the male moth flies down, thinks he's in for a party, and gets his wings covered with these little particles and he flies off and then he lands uh, next to a, a lady moth and she thinks he's a girl so she says get off <laughs> the other male moths jump on him thinking he's a girl because he smells like a girl and he says get off so that's the end of the party so that is so that's nice. hysterical that is so we're really we're really moth spoilers okay. here aren't we so the moths aren't getting any action at all and this is quite right that there have been some comments here on on instagram because it's the larvae that eat our lovely woolens and cashmeres and, and silks and things. Yes. So what we're doing is yes. we're preventing the larvae. We're not killing the moth. Moths carry on flying no. around, but they're not mating because they're all confused as to who's a boy and who's no a babies. girl because of these little particles, which are completely safe and non-toxic. So because they're not mating, they're not creating larvae. So there are no larvae to munch away through our fabrics. Isn't it genius? It's genius. It's lovely. And we, we named it the moth decoy. So the, the trouble is that how would you find something like that? You wouldn't because it's a new product. And so therefore we've we've all got to talk about it because it's a really, really good product. Really good product. And we use it we use it in conjunction with the trap. The I've got the trap, trap here. I can show you. Every, Let me show everybody because obviously on, on Facebook um, they can't actually see you. I do have a moth trap. Ah. Um, where is my moth trap? I've got so many bits of... Here we go. Here is... So this is my moth box. So this is what you get, isn't it? Correct, yeah. So I'll show and you how this works. Um, a stick. 
sticky glue board okay. and it's impregnated with the, the female pheromone. So if your lady moths uh, are, are having babies and uh, you've got male moths flying around, they if they don't get caught by the one of the other side of the room, they'll get caught in the sticky trap. So this is the sticky trap here. I'm just peeling this off. I've just taken off the sticky bit off the back as well. So this goes whoops, into my um, moth box like so. So it's all cardboard. There's no plastic, which is really nice. So pop that in there like that. OK, so now I've got a little moth trap. So this will attract the male moths, will it? And they'll come and land on this yes. a bit like flypaper. Yes. So it's a very good thing to have in the corner of a room, under a bed, under a chest of drawers, um, under a sofa, not on your windowsill, because if the window's open, they'll fly in, because it does smell very strongly. Of, right, so you don't want to attract them, the okay. And no. <laughs> so you <laughs> have this, and then, and, and then you have this little pellet as well, so you have the two together, yeah? Yes, but on opposite sides of the room. OK, and let me show everybody how, how the moth decoy works, because you get, it's really clever, you get a little folding piece of paper, or a little folding bit of card, um, which I can fold like that. It make, makes a little stand like that. Oops. Let's do this. So you, you've got your, your little stand, OK? It's got a little bit of backing paper, so I'm going to peel that off like that. So that's got the sticky bit on it. And then you simply stick this. Am I doing this correctly? I'm very nervous doing this in front yes. of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Correct. so you stick that on there. <laughs> okay, and then you have your little stand. So you just literally, I've got that sat on a shelf. I've got like a little sort of dressing. Yes. It's not really a dressing room. It's just like a dressing alcove, if you like, with shelves with all my mm -hmm. woolens. Mm -hmm. And um, on one of the shelves. And you say put them at sort of moth height. So that's kind of... They, they, they yes. fly, what, around like five, six foot? Well, yes, they're lazy flyers. And uh, as anybody knows, that you can actually smack them on the walls quite easily if you can find them. Yeah. Um, but sort of mid-height in the room, yes. Um, and if you have it on one side, one of those is enough for an average size room and one Great. moth box is enough for an average size room. Great, so and one of these each side of the room. sort of hit uh, if you like and that's the the methodology that the museums and the national trust houses and the palaces use for now their that's, collections that is really yeah. interesting so i know that you have done a lot of work with you know the royal palaces and historic houses because when you think of a lot of those garments that are in museums you know for example i don't know queen elizabeth's coronation robes or things mm. that are totally irreplaceable you know they are they are unique historic garments and you get the moth in that. It's, it is a problem. Or historic palaces where you've got tapestries on the wall, for example. Yeah. Or beautiful silk King curtains Henry's, at Versailles. King Henry's bedchamber. <laughs> wow. So King Henry's bedchamber, yeah. is that protected with, with moth decoy? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, and, and sticky traps. And uh, the Natural um, History Museum has a big problem. Poor old guy, the gorilla, has to go into the freezer every three months. No. Um, because, of course... Yeah, the moths can do such damage there. That's so, so interesting. So they, they, and, and they've been having a problem with the sprays. I, I had a visit um, behind the scenes, and uh, they told me that they're, they're using, they were the ones that discovered through using these sprays that the moths were becoming resistant to the chemical sprays. Right. And that's where we then researched high and low for a spray that wasn't a really horrible synthetic chemical. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that's the thing. I mean, you have to remember that if something's an insecticide, it, it's a killer. I mean, that's what it's doing. It's killing tiny insects. So there's all sorts of work going on, I know, at the moment, looking at microbiome disruption, for example, because we've got our good gut bacteria and our gut bugs. So if, you know, if you're spraying all sorts of insecticides around you, you're going to be affecting your own health in some way obviously smaller children will be more more likely to be adversely affected but not good for anybody with a compromised immune system or nope. you know no, really no, no. Or, or to have that build up and of course it doesn't work does it because nature's so clever 
and moths and little critters, they just become <laughs> resistant. Like we become antibiotic <laughs> resistant. Yes, exactly. They exactly just go, the they just thing. laugh in our faces and go, ha, yeah. you think that spray is going to work? Well, we're now resistant to it. <laughs> so we, we looked long and hard and found um, a chrysanthemum spray. Yep. So the chrysanthemum, my grandpa used to, to um, plant marigolds uh, around the beans. I still do. There you go. So I've got my that's spray. what happens. It, they've got their own natural gas that uh, insects don't like. So mm. this, um, it's called pyrethrum, yep. and it's um, it comes nice. from a, <laughs> it's quite strong. It comes from the chrysanthemums, which are farmed sustainably in Kenya. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. My my farm in Kenya <laughs> used to be next door to a, a, a pyrethrum farm. And they really? do, they, yeah, they, they use it a lot. They, they grow the pyrethrum extract wow. in, up in Laikipia by Mount Kenya and also um, uh, around Lake Naivasha where a lot of the flower farms are. And yeah, you can really smell, sometimes you can smell all these chrysanthemums. Anybody who's walked into a florist shop and you know that, that kind of, it's quite a sort of almost a herby smell of, yes. of chrysanthemum. Yeah. So we, we found this uh, pyrethrum spray and, and uh, obviously tried it and yes it works very very effectively but you do want to wear a mask you do want to spray the room keep the windows and doors shut and leave it for four hours and we mixed it with our own um essential oils mm. um which is a recipe that, that, that we've been using for 10 years now which is based on something oh way back way back um uh, an old potpourri um methodology of mixing the herbs together uh, mm. actually the the french used to scatter wild herbs on the floor uh in the 17th century onwards to mask mm. smells and dirt and, and and they would just put the fresh herbs down and then they would sweep yeah. them up afterwards so we use cedarwood lavender patchouli lemongrass clove laurel rosemary and thyme Lovely. and each one of those has got a as you know story behind it yeah um and that have been used for centuries so it, it's a nice complex fragrance and we put it into sachets but we've also put it into this spray you've as well. got so, so many lovely things i mean this is lovely this is um a linen spray with vetiver vetiver lime and lime and linen is this uh, yeah, lemon, lemongrass. Lemongrass, fabulous. And then this one, which is also one that I love, the natural linen spray. This is the cedarwood blend, which is the traditional yeah. one. I'm getting some questions here, Julia, about carpets. Yes. You, you mentioned carpets there in the in the French. Can you use this to prevent carpet moth? Well, definitely oh, a treatment. Lovely. We call that the treatment spray. Okay, so and that would then, be this one. Um, yeah. That would be the, your one treatment that um, if you've got a real problem, you need to use it probably once a month in your cleaning, you know, uh, schedule. Yeah, okay. uh, and then spray the linen sprays at any time. And the lady moth, she doesn't like a strong smell. Right. And so she's looking for somewhere dark and undisturbed where she can, uh, with a food source, where she can lay her eggs. Obviously, cashmere. Yeah, so, so Lady Moth is... Where you've only got that, that much, you can't get the hoover underneath. And um, so then it's good to spray. Good to spray, right. So, yeah, you were saying under furniture, so I, I think you broke up there exactly, where you can't hoover. Um, so the I'm um, yeah. being asked questions here. Uh, so pets, children... <laughs> Any issues with that? Obviously, you know, for, for pets and children, you're not... If you're using this for your wardrobe, there's no issue because, I mean, no. you're, you're going to have this high out of children's reach anyway, but I can't imagine there's going to be any issue with, with them, you know, getting hold of it. No. It's, no. Uh, uh, not at all. The, the moth box um, and the decoy... Uh, which is these two? Child-friendly... Child Great. And pet friendly. And pet friendly. Because also, that's the other thing you've got to worry about. Is it fish? You can't spray things near fish or, or goldfish. <coughs> exactly. The uh, chrysanthemum spray makes sure there is nothing in the room that um, is alive. Right. Uh, because, yes, it is effective. Yeah. It's, it's a very quick, quick-acting um, chemical, 
natural chemical, but uh, it is effective. So no aquariums. <laughs> no aquariums. And I'll, I'll, no I'll make sure that the gerbils aren't in the room. We don't yes. have fish, but we do have gerbils. <laughs> Do you know, I think what is just so for people who are joining late, who are asking about this, um, this is such an easy, sustainable way to get rid of yeah. moth for good. So what it does is if you miss the beginning, this little decoy has natural carnauba wax impregnated with female moth pheromones. And our male moths are drawn to it. So you'll see the male moths landing on this and kind of coating their their wings and their feet in this and then they get confused don't they because they then go and try and hop yes. on a lady moth and the lady moth's not having any of it no. <laughs> <laughs> and then the male moths come along and think oh you're a nice lady moth and he says get off I'm not a lady yeah. moth so, <laughs> so the net result is no baby moths so no larvae get hatched yeah uh, or created or hatched, which means yeah. there's nothing to go and munch their way through yeah. your your lovely um, woolens like this. So you don't end up with this. And I have to say that since using in my wardrobe here, I am absolutely religious about it. And what I really like is that you've got a, an annual subscription. Yes. So yeah. you send these out so people can replace them. Because how long will a yeah. pellet last? Three months. They are a live product. Uh, and they do have a shelf life. We yeah. receive fresh stock every month. We keep it in the fridge and we send it out as soon as the uh, subscription um, comes up for renewal. Great. And so, so every three months. So I, I, and yes. I get this. I get sent this. I've, I've been a subscriber yeah. now for several years. I get this through the post. So I don't need to remember. And I yes. just get my little pellet and I go, great. I'll go and replace it. I know that yes. it's always active. My clothes are protected. <laughs> I've sent my daughter off to university with one when Lily uh, was living. She was living in southwest London and they had an absolute outbreak. It was just going through all the little, you know, the apartment blocks and the terraced houses. It was extraordinary. Everybody and they were trying. They were spending a fortune on all these sprays and really toxic stuff that wasn't working. And having to breathe in all these things and, you know, buying, I don't know, you know, little impregnated sachets and things that frankly i mean they smell quite nice but they don't work they don't kill them no. off do they no 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 you've got to be a bit radical there well the uh, natural uh, no english heritage that was it they did um, a survey and uh, they gave away um um the pheromone moth traps like this and then they asked people to count over a period of time what they caught mm. and they found out that the south of England has the worst um, problem of moths. Really? So I know from London, um, say Putney, Islington, where there's a river and trees, because naturally they like to live in trees. Oh, interesting. So some, yeah, a wooded area or say old houses or if you've got a, a thatched roof. I mean, yeah. I'm in a 300 year old cottage and it's, it's, well, you've just got to, it's part of your you know, yeah. uh, monthly cleaning uh, procedure. Yeah. You've just got to keep you on top of it. You, you can't. And the trouble is that you think, oh, yes, I'm on top of it now. And then you get a bit lazy and forget. Yeah. But well, that's it, why it's so great to have to a subscription going. because, you know, every three yeah. months you get a new pellet. And it reminds me, you know, to put my new trap in, you know, to have a, a, a good kind of, you know, dust around. And I love seeing it when, you know, when you see that, that you're actually catching them. But actually, you shouldn't worry if, if you've got one of these and you see moth flying around, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because it's not the moth that are eating the clothes, it's no. the larvae. So you don't really care if, yeah. if moths are, are flying around, you know, unable to, you know, have a, have a big party with, with other moths. They're just flying around because, you know, I mean, you can, you know, let them out or, or whatever. Or, um, but they're not going to eat your clothes, basically, because it's the larvae no. that eat the clothes. No. It's uh, it, it is your special things. Um, well, they're eating um, natural uh, proteins with, with a keratin, which is a natural protein in silk, cotton, wool. All the expensive hair, stuff, fur. basically. Look, they're not yeah. going after the cheap, you know, nylon, no, polyester. No, no, no. They want they that's their food source, and obviously the softer 
Uh, the more comfortable, the better. Also, what they like is a little bit of dream topping, which is when you take off your jumper, you've got skin and hair particles. No. You might have food splats, and that's why you get them sort of all around here and maybe on your elbow. No, um, I didn't. I had no idea. So if you've dropped a little bit yeah. of you know custard yeah. on, on your on your favorite <laughs> jumper without realizing it and, yeah. and put it yeah. down that's why you yes. get the whole right there okay you don't yes. get it kind of you know here where it can't be seen no no it's it's in in, in those places so you know unfortunately you've got to be clean but it's just not practical to wash your cashmere every time you wear it and of course you're not going to no and, and then you put it away anyway it. because you're not yes. wearing it in the summer exactly so come the winter, we have a, um, sorry, come after the winter, sorry, come the summer when you wash, well, pe people uh, have mixed ideas about dry cleaning and washing your cashmere. Mm. It's a lot nicer to wash it. I wash um, mine, I, I, I put it yeah. on a 30 degree wash, a, a yeah. woolen wash, and I, you know, even things like my expensive travel wrap, I remember the first time I yes. washed it, I was so nervous thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to shrink <laughs> right. it, it's going to be terrible. They just don't like to be tumble dried, obviously, just dry it flat. But I, I no, wash all mine. No, 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 no. naturally. Mm. But, um, but then if you've got a lot of cashmere jumpers that you're ready to, uh, say it's springtime, so it's May, it's time to put it all away, dry clean it because they don't like the taste of dry cleaning fluid. Okay. So you could dry clean at that one time to mm. store it all. Now, I know a lady who actually has a, um, a freezer chest in her attic, and she just puts them in her in the freezer. She was she had such a problem. I think she lived in a thatched cottage. Right. Um, so, yes, the freezer, obviously, that they can't live in that cold temperature, but people think that they can freeze their sweaters, take them out, and that's it. No, you've still got to wash them because you've got to wash off all the bits and bobs, the dream topping, if you like. And then right. we, we sell these um, knitwear bags, which um, have got a clear plastic window, and they're breathable top and bottom, and you can get oh. about four or five. Um, oh, yeah, I've got one here. Oh, these are really yes. beautiful, actually. Cashmere storage bag. Oh, that, that one's the cotton one. This one is the, the, the man-made breathable one. The cotton one is lovely. Okay, show um, me. I think I've got I've got such a lovely big box of things here. Practical. Oh, here we go. Breathable storage bag. That's Let me show, then, show everybody what this one is. Ah, oh, okay. So you'd wash your knitwear and then you'd and pop then it in dinner. here? Fine. Yes. And then would you put that in the freezer? Um, you you did have moss, but it's it's much better really just to wash them and put them straight away. Put if them you away. Yeah. yeah. But then if you come upon a um, uh, a shelf that you've forgotten about uh, and you see various holes, then you can stick it all in the freezer, kill everything, yeah. and start your washing. And the trouble is, when you wash, then the holes kind of appear. They get yeah. a bit bigger. Tell me, when when, when you wash um, woolens, does that get rid of the larvae? It would have to be at a hot temperature, but of course, yeah, which you're not going to do. Don't really want to do that. No. So, but the thing is, you can see them. They are uh, when the the, the little um, eggs are laid. They look like a grain of rice. They start off about the size of a pinhead, and then they get to a grain no. of rice. But you kind of want to get at them before that. So it really is. Um, my dad had a, a, a phrase that used to drive me mad. He was a headmaster, and it was everlasting vigilance is the price of eternal safety. Everlasting vigilance is what? The price of eternal the price safety. Of eternal safety. Everlasting so, vigilance. Okay, I should remember that one. I should tell my kids that. I should annoy my kids with that yeah, one. Exactly. Drive them mad. And so, unfortunately, you know, you've just got to, if you've got precious things like uh, yeah. your cashmere in your wardrobe and travel wraps, and, and yeah. they are something that will last for years and years and years, and uh, you just have to keep looking at them and, and shaking them and um, just making sure that they're yeah. clean. You can actually also steam. Now, steaming does kill um, the moth larva, and we actually, on our website, um, 
we have a, a handheld steamer, but I think lots of people now have yeah. steamers, even for travelling. Yeah. Um, and if you just hold up your, your knitwear, you can actually do it in your wardrobe as well. Mm. Um, uh, and, and give everything good, you know, your scarves, your pashminas, that, those are the, the, scarves are the worst things for collecting um, food deposits. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and drink spills, Yeah, et and for guys and we, as well, I mean, there, there's, yeah. there's questions and comments here about suits and jackets and coats, you know, oh, all yeah. of those. And also, interestingly, I know we're all into, you know, sustainable and recycling and vintage, you know, I've bought things from charity shops before. I remember buying a woolen bag, which I was really uh, taken with. When I got home, I realised that it had it was full of moth holes. Oh, no. And I thought, oh, my goodness, am I bringing in a whole load of moth <laughs> yeah. into my house? So I guess yeah. we need to be careful if, if we yes. are buying, you know, secondhand charity shop woolens and all of those things that, that we can actually be importing some yeah. moth. Yeah, anything that comes in from a charity shop, vintage shop, second hand, um, they, you can't help it, 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 but you really then do have to probably have it dry cleaned. I think that's the best thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And mm. um, yeah, don't, don't skimp on that. Yes. I mean, I've heard dreadful things about rugs coming in from the Far East and the Middle East and <sighs> being rolled up. My girlfriend had one and she rolled it up and put it under a bed and forgot about it and it was on a wooden floor in up in a guest room and she kept seeing these moths and and then one day she went underneath unrolled this rug mm. and it was heaving heaving oh my Straight goodness <laughs> oh gosh and yeah. do carpet moths eat clothes are they the same or, or do they just go for carpet and curtains yes it's um it's the common one is called, uh, its Latin name is Tineola bacilliella, and that's what we're all, all our sticky traps, uh, the pheromones are attracting. And that is the common moth, and it will eat anything that's cotton, wool, um, right. silk, natural. So your um, lovely expensive woolly carpets, that's yeah. the one that it's going to go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's so and interesting. Also, People that have the carpets, they say, why, why am I getting moths? I spray, I hoover, and yet I'm still seeing them coming. Well, if, you, if they're on floorboards, of course, the moths come from underneath. So they get into the fabric of the house, into oh. the cavity walls, and then they, they, they come in under the floorboards. Oh, my goodness. And, but there is good news. Yeah. There yeah, is good yeah. news. <laughs> this, one of these in each room... So you could put this in your room if you had a sitting room with wool carpets or yeah. lovely, you know, yes. woolly cushions yes. and things that are at risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one of those. Change the pellet yes. every three months. Job done. Yeah. yeah. Safe, yeah. effective. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No partying I mean, off. The... But, well, I mean, they can party, but they can't actually get any results yeah. from it. So, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> the Natural History Museum, oh, actually, and the Royal Opera House, they, because um, they nearly lost all their costumes, um, they started to use, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine mm. the hundreds of thousands of pounds? But they started to use the moth decoy, and they said it um, it stopped uh, their problem by about 50, well fifty percent reduction yeah. in in the trouble that they had, which is actually very good for yeah. for a natural for some, yeah like for that. somewhere that's full of you know ancient Gosh. costumes, all, all the historic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Really good. It's Julia, it's so lovely to chat to you. And I know there's going to be lots oh, and lots of questions. Where, where do we find you online? What, what are your social media um, channels? It's uh, at Total Wardrobe Care and totalwardrobecare.co.uk. Great. So any questions and there, there's the phone number and you can call us and we're in the office um, one by one. So it's a bit, uh, but, okay. but email us and we're, we're straight there. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I will continue with my, my lifelong subscriptions. I, I absolutely am genuinely so pleased that we were able to get this chat in because, as you know, I am a genuine fan. I think that these are absolutely great. I can't bear the way that moths destroy all my favourite things. Yes. And if we can find a way to get our own back um, and don't even have to resort to the, you know, the toxic pesticides. And thank you for the Liz Loves discount. We are extremely grateful. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank nice you. Nice to chat to you. Keep okay. well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Oh, isn't that so great? Told you it would be good. Aren't you pleased you listened to that? Honestly, I, it, it is this time of year when we start getting all our comfy stuff out. And I'm now, you know, wearing jumpers that I haven't worn for a year or more. And it's just so depressing, isn't it? When you go and you get out that, you know, jacket that you wore, I don't know, 18 months ago. And it's got a flipping great hole munched in it. So, moths watch out. So, totalwardrobecare.com. I think that's her website. Let me just check. I'm sure it is. Oh, it's .co.uk. Uh, made in the UK, totalwardrobecare.co.uk. Use Liz Loves, all in capitals, and enjoy your 10% off. And I genuinely, highly, highly recommend it. Now, somebody else that I wanted to mention who are doing great things with woolens, and now you can feel safe in buying your woolens, is my lovely friend Lucy at Aspiga. You may remember that I did uh, an Instagram Live with Lucy I was due to be in Kenya to go and work with some of her um, women's groups and hopefully I will get there because I'd love to show you what they do and uh, be able to continue to support them because these are majorly disadvantaged women in Kenya who do all the beading and you know it pays for their health care and their kids' education and it's just great. Well, she has really expanded her Aspiga line and one of the other things that she's now got on her website, which are selling like hotcakes, so you might want to go and take a look, are these really beautiful Fair Isle, she's got jumpers and cardigans. I do like a nice cardi, me. I mean, I like jumpers too, but I just find having a nice cardi that I can slip over t-shirts and things or a little dress, you know, really useful. And I just love these. I mean, look at these colours. Aren't they so beautiful? So her Aspiga cardigans, she's got a few in stock at the moment, but we spoke this morning and she's got a big delivery coming in two days time. So if you're interested, go and have a look at her website. Um, so these are made in Scotland from Shetland wool, so sustainable, renewable resource. And it says here, uh, you can hand wash them um, and they're made by an organization called Eribe. If I pronounce that correct, correctly, Eribe. And they are a slow fashion brand. So the opposite of fast fashion. So my, my friend Livia would be very pleased to hear me talking about slow fashion. Um, it's knitwear is made to last. Uh, they produce their wool responsibly, which safeguards the environment. Made from soft, sustainable Shetland wool. I just love it. And I'm afraid no moth larvae are going to be able to feast on this because this is going into my wardrobe that is protected. Ha ha with the moth decoy, so gotcha. Anyway, um, we do have a Liz Loves. It just gives you free PMP at a speaker at the moment, but hey, you know, that's better than nothing, isn't it? So you get free PMP if you use Liz Loves on the Aspiga website, and if you'd like to go and check out, they're really beautiful. They've got lots of colors, lots of bright colors, um, and the soft muted shades like these, which I absolutely love. So I am delighted to be having more of my woolens around me now that I uh, can protect them. And just as I was talking there about um, being careful if you are buying anything wool or cashmere from a secondhand shop or a charity shop, we had a little look around, my team and I had a little look at what we could be doing with recycling garments because I know a lot of the charity shops are currently closed, or I think they're all closed during lockdown. So not only can we not go and buy from them, but we also, if we're using these times to clear out our cupboards, we can't actually go and donate. So these are some other things. Uh, and this was uh, my one of my editorial assistants, Martha, who came up with some great tips, which I thought I'd share with you. Thank you very much, Martha. So she says, uh, you can resell online. Obviously, if your clothes have lots of wear in them, um, you could sell them, you know, online sites like eBay, etc., um, which is very sustainable. I buy things on eBay. I love it when I can get something that's been pre-loved and use it again. Recycling centres, these are places that are open, so they're often situated next to general tips or refuse dispose um, centres. So you can look up your nearest textile recycling centre and you can take that. And what they do is they recycle the fabrics so it's less polluting than just throwing them out. You can of course go for clothing banks. Salvation Army, right across the country, are doing a brilliant job with clothing banks and especially looking for warm clothes at the moment so um, if that's something that you can help with then do please look them up you can look them up online you can find your nearest 
and, and then take them some nice clean clothes. I'm sure they will be very grateful. Often we get charity bags put through the door, not at the moment, but that's again something else. Um, they usually have their little collection date printed on them and you can look them up online as well to make sure that they're real. I know that there was a whole spate of scams with charity collectors, but if ever you get anything like that through the door, do look it up online just to check it out to make sure that it's real. A lot of the large supermarkets have donation points where you can post shoes and clothes to reuse them. So, you know, don't think that just because the charity shops are shut that you can't actually make a difference. Um, and then, of course, once the charity shops do open up again. And of course, as Martha says here, old clothes make great cleaning cloths. Old T-shirts make great cloths for polishing and wiping. Give it a go for a new lease of life. Well, thank you very much, Martha, for those tips. Really appreciate you looking those up for me. So before we go, let me just check my messages. Um, Lainey, thank you very much, Hun, for managing Facebook and for putting posts up. So... Uh, right, yep, a speaker, if a couple of comments about that, that's the Fair Isle cardigan. They will get more stock in, and I think it's two days' time, so if you want to check them back. Yes, Borken, so this is the recycled cashmere that they use to make new garments, so really lovely, simple v-neck. What I like about this one is it's not that bright, bright, harsh, creamy colour, you know, bright white. Um, which often has optical brightness in it. Uh, I just love this. Sort of, it looks like slightly old, slightly aged, almost like a buttermilk colour. Um, and these are in the sale. This is the cashmere jumper and the leggings that I've got on at the moment. And if you want to go to their website, then I love their brand. It's a really nice ethical fashion brand. Liz Loves 20. Sorry, it's a bit of a different one. Liz Loves 20. That gets you 20% on anything that's not in the sale, if you want to check that out. Um, the Livia Firth podcast, a couple of you are asking, I recorded that with Livia on Boxing Day. We, we sent it out on Boxing Day as our kind of Boxing Day special. So really interesting there about fast fashion and about why we should all be reusing and recycling. And if you haven't listened to that, it's, it's a really nice one to listen to if you're looking for something to while away a bit of time. Uh, Oh gosh, lots of questions here. Uh, lots of questions on menopause. Um, I'm going to be talking to menopause doctor Louise Newson either today or tomorrow for my Friday Five podcast. So there will be a bit of an update. So do please make a note to um, check out the Friday Five podcast. Apologies, it didn't happen last week. I got a bit, all went a bit peat tong, as I said, what with um, home schooling, etc. Uh, this is from Marion on Instagram who says, uh, Hi Liz, saw you on this morning. I found it very interesting. I take chewable vitamin D. Does it have the same effect as the mouth spray quick absorption? Yes, as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen any clinical studies done on chewables. So it's always hard if there's no clinical study to refer to. Um, but certainly what you're doing is you're keeping it in contact with the little network of blood capillaries on the inside of your cheek. And that's what's helping with the absorption. So if you're using sprays, for example, the Better You spray, which I really like, they advise you spray it onto the side of your cheek or under your tongue. And then you hold it there if you can for like 30 seconds just to let it absorb. And that really gets it into the bloodstream and circulating quickly. Don't forget, we do have a discount on Better You. Great sprays. I really like them. I give them for my children. I have them for myself. I use the vitamin D3 with the K2 and also the B12 spray. I think it's excellent. I also like their magnesium bars. I treated myself um, to a magnesium bath the other night. It was really good. Um, so eyes. Oh, thank you very much. I did do my eyes slightly differently today. I don't know whether you can notice. Uh, I have recorded it. I shall pop it up on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, once I've got all the notes of everything that I use so I can caption it properly. Um, so that will go up. I try and do a little post on YouTube every Thursday because I'm not live with you on Thursday. So at least there'll be something to, to go and check out. But I did it as a kind of a slightly smoky eye. Anyway, I just worked my way through that and filmed that. So that will be up uh, live tomorrow. Um, hi, Liz. I need to know how to get rid of menopause fat and skin thickness, well, oh my goodness, lots to say about that. Interestingly, estrogen, if you're taking HRT, estrogen helps with the redisposition of our fat. So one of the reasons why we become this barrel shape 
and we get, you know, it's called middle age spread for a reason, because our waistline starts to spread out, is because one of the functions of oestrogen is controlling fat distribution. And when we have low oestrogen levels, our fat deposits tend to get spread around here. So once you start taking oestrogen, you're replacing your natural form of oestrogen with a gel or a spray or patch, um, you find that your waistline tends to come back because our distribution changes. But there's lots else that we can do. I know lots of you have got the instep, which was the exercise gadget that I promoted the other day. Um, love Julie. It was lovely to talk to her. We are working on a Zoom class for those of you who've got it. Uh, if she can get it together in time, we, it might be this Saturday, otherwise it'll be the following Saturday in the morning, so we'll let everybody know. She has unfortunately sold out. She's very sorry. She's ordering more. It'll be eight weeks, okay? So hold that thought. Um, but well done to everybody who snapped it up really quickly because it, it is um, a very good gadget. I do have my e-guide to, I think it's called a Stronger, Slimmer You, and that has got resistance training um, exercises in it. The things that I do with Michael Gary, like my push-ups and the squats, things that you can do at home without any equipment. So do please head to that and have a look. In the meantime, if you didn't manage to get your instep and you'd like to be doing something at home during lockdown, Lainey, perhaps you could pop a link to the e-guide to a stronger, slimmer you. We do have just a few remaining of the current edition of Liz Our Wellbeing magazine with the subscriber offer. This is the offer for direct debit. You get six issues for the price of five. You get free UK postage and packing. And at the moment, while stocks last, you get a free archive edition from last January, February. So this is for new subscribers who obviously won't have that. So you'll get a double dose of goodness. And I hope that you really enjoy that. This is actually one of my favorite pictures from the back there. That's, isn't that how we want to be feeling? Jump for joy, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Bit of positivity, that's what we're all about. Positivity. On that note, I think I shall go. Uh, my, oh, travel wrap. Yeah, I'm not sure what the color is, but yeah, this is a, a travel wrap. That was a question uh, from Victoria uh, on Facebook. So I, it's an old one. She may still have them on the website. I'm not sure, go and check out travel wrap, but I love it. I mean, as you know, well-being pink that's my brand color for Lizard well-being if you can find bits of pink to wrap around you it just puts light back into your face and makes you feel feel more cheery so sending you lots of cheery vibes do go and have a look at totalwardrobecare.co.uk she's written really interesting blogs if you want to know more about the life cycle of moths and those pesky critters how we can eradicate them um, without actually killing them but just stopping them from having a bit of procreational fun, then that has to be a good deal. And genuinely, um, I'm very excited to have shared that with you today because I just do think it's a really, really useful find. They're not sold in mainstream shops, so you wouldn't necessarily find that information elsewhere. So Liz Loves gets you 10% off, sending everybody lots of Liz Love back at you. Thank you for all your hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lovely, lovely to see everybody and stay tuned. There's so much happening on Liz Our Wellbeing at the moment. We're researching so many good things to share with you. Oh my goodness, this is going to be the year. It is. We're going to get through it. We're going to get out of lockdown and we're going to really focus on well-being and wellness and being our fittest, our best yet. And that's exactly what my team and I are working on. So hold that thought. Sending love. See you on Friday, I hope. Bye now. Bye-bye.